Well, Augie, I was hoping that this year I would work with attractive female models. But here I am, again, talking to the ugliest man on earth, dressed for some reason, like a proline chocolate on clearance. Can you uh, do that again? Don't mess with the guy editing the footage. <laughs> so, where's your New Year's resolution? Yeah, I want to bring peace and harmony between the different political groups in the United States of America. Yeah, looking at the news, you're doing a good job as always. Was there anything else? I want to make more friends this year. I think you might want to take a second crack at that political thing instead. Could you stand straight for a second? <laughs> The Super Tacoma 50mm f1.4 is considered to be one of the finest vintage lenses ever made. This version has 8 elements, so no radioactive thorium in its glass like the 7 element version. Being all metal, the focus wheel is as smooth as an old machine on an oil rig digging for oil, operated by a man named uh, Oiliver. The aperture ring has a satisfying click de click. When using it on digital cameras, Make sure to switch the mechanism to manual instead of auto. That way the aperture blades operate as they should. So here's a question. Should you buy the best vintage lens which looks to the future? Or should you buy the best modern lens that looks to the past? Enter the Zeiss Classic Planar 50mm f1.4. Those two lenses occupy two different sides of the same bed, so to say. Like a selfish ex-wife. A more detailed review of the planar itself will be in a future episode. So to not take attention away from the Takuma, the upcoming footage has been all filmed with the Super Takuma 50mm f1.4 using a GH5S with a Metabons XL adapter. This particular copy also doesn't have haze, mold or scratches on the lens and is therefore as close to factory for a used 57 year old lens. A quick history of the 8 element version, Takuma designed this lens to go up against the Zeiss Ultron 50mm f1.8. While Takuma claimed its title as the best 50mm at the time, the Asashi company lost money on every 8 element lens due to production cost. One thing about Takuma, it has a very nice rendering quality, being a low element lens. This lens is easy to color grade because of the lower contrast with its less coatings. It's prone to be washed out with flare if you shoot directly to the sun. The colors are still great and vibrant enough and are actually very naturalistic looking. But how does the Zeiss Planar now compare? First thing you'll notice, it's not as wide as the Takuma. Either the Takuma is actually a 48mm or the Zeiss is actually a 52mm. Or the M42 adapter on the Takuma is creating additional distance compared to the Planar which is a straight EF mount. Bokeh is very subjective, but I like bubble bokeh. As much as a chubby teen likes bubble tea with the muffin. Zzz. Muffins. Chubby teens like muffins. The Zeiss has more of a bokeh blur. It is hard to say if it's the famous Zeiss 3D pop we're witnessing or if it's the additional millimeter with the Takuma. The Zeiss has more contrast and also more sharpness in the corners. The Takuma has less vignetting. You notice Augie is a blinky McBlink over here. That comes from being pepper sprayed by women for years ever since he was in kindergarten. The planer also has the bubble bokeh but it's slightly smoother than the Takuma. You can also see at f1.4 it's sharper than the Takuma. However, the Zeiss still maintains a vintage look. F4 is very interesting and a role reversal in depth of field. The Takuma has actually more bokeh than the Zeiss at f4. While the Zeiss seems slightly sharper, the Takuma is keeping up. Having said that, for film, sharpness really isn't as relevant for telling a story. As long as your subject is not out of focus, rendering and lighting is more relevant. Now you might say, why buy a vintage lens if you could buy a sharp corner-to-corner -corner modern lens with completely smooth bokeh, like they use for commercials and music videos, which actually make money instead of filming twigs in your backyard like a YouTube goof. First of all, that attitude is the reason why your parents never loved you. Secondly, do you want your short film to look like a tampon advertisement? The problem with modern lenses is that they render like a teen magazine poster. Bland 2D images overcompensated with extra sharpness and popping colors. What are the most expensive cine lenses to shoot? 
anamorphic, which have more imperfections than spherical, but those warpy imperfections give it the classic foam look. Vintage lenses have a similar quality. At the right, Augie, look to your side, then straight. Could you lift up your hand and now make a fist and now punch yourself in the balls? Very often, to see what's going on, you have to take many steps back to view the full picture. It's something I learned from a landscape photographer who I paid to take passport photos of my ex-wife. If you're offended by that, how dare you? You don't know her. She went to orgies just for the free grapes. So stop down to F4, both the Takuma and Zeiss will have a modern clean look if that is required for your project. I would argue that makes both lenses more versatile than new modern lenses who are purely a one-trick sharpness pony. At F1.4 you have the vintage charm and at F4 you have the high resolution while still maintaining 3D rendering from the low element count. Now, How's the manual focusing, you might ask? The Takuma is very smooth to focus. However, it focuses through the opposite left direction than what I'm used to. It's not really a flaw, it's just something I should point out. The Zeiss has a slightly longer focus pull. And it turns it to the direction I'm used to. So for myself, it's a bit easier. Let's add some cinematic bars and more than orange teal color grading for some standard cinematic effect. This reminds me of John Wick. If John Wick would look like Quasimodo with his hump deflated. If you ever wanted to know what a runway model in Transylvania looks like, wonder no more. Oh, well, back to the Takuma. Aperture-wise, it's not as bright as the Zeiss, but because it's less contrasty, it makes up for it lighting-wise when capturing grays and blacks. Zeiss lenses are known for the micro-contrast, showing more intertonal range. So even with the high color contrast, grays and blacks don't get muddy. I really like this shot. And I think this would show that the Takama would be the perfect vintage lens to get a clean 90s look for a film project. The Zeiss here shows that while it has more vintage charm than even other modern Zeiss lenses of its classic lineup, the look here is slightly more modern as an overall presentation compared to the Takama. Okay, Augie, back forward. Now tilt your head all the way up and use the momentum to headbutt yourself in the balls. To not disappoint the few photographers that are still watching this, here are some images shot with the Lumix G9 at 400 ISO. So which of those lenses would one choose? It purely depends on if you want a vintage modern lens or modern vintage lens. A painterly bokeh or bokeh painterly? Contrasty saturated or saturated contrasty? At this point I'm just making up words or do words make up the point? Ultimately the price on both is the same on eBay if you want a good used copy without haze, scratches and dust. And here are more Takuma shots. Would I recommend the Super Takuma 50mm f1.4 8 element lens? Yes, I would. It can do all the fundamentals and image quality that a modern lens can do, while also having qualities that you could never replicate with a brand new contemporary lens. Its rendering makes videos and pictures interesting while still having good resolution. This Takuma is proof that you can have a lens that has both image quality and character. There is no need to compromise. Compromise. Which is what nature did with you, Augie, when it grabbed at the bottom of the parts bin. But the Takuma is a great lens. Oh, I totally agree. There was a rhetorical statement. No one is interested in your feedback, Augie. Oh well. Let's show the world your endorsement. Thumbs up. Yes, that's right. Thumb a bit higher. And now shove it up your pee hole.